All right, hello, and welcome to Echoes of Color with Jeffrey Morrison. So this camera in a better position now. All right, we're going to do another whipping chat, because it's fun. Yeah, it's my day off, so you know. All right, so. We're working on Diamond Art Club's I Am by Ravine Phelan. It's a nice little dragon here. We're getting there. Uh, a round. 20 inches by 28 inches, 51 centimeters by 71 centimeters, uh, 29 colors, and two ABs, 129 and 137. Uh, AB stands for Aurora Borealis, and it's just a fancier uh, term for shinier uh, diamond painting drill colors. Anything under 149 DMC code, you're good to go for an AB. So, there you go. Great. Alright, just gonna hang out for a bit. Get some more drills on adhesive here. And we'll have tons of fun. Alright. Uh, here, how about that? And up a little. Uh, Kidoki. Basically, yeah, almost basically the full surface area there. Okay, good. All right. So I just finished the color uh, E three twelve. All right. So I was mentioning Kinder Surprise toys the other day, and Lost World. Jurassic Park or whatever. So, yeah, here's a Kinder Surprise kind of toy. And a very cool Stegosaurus. Rawr. See? These are the toys that I think are illegal in the U.S. Or candies. Kinder Surprise because of the small parts. Yeah, some toys. That's true. And I believe this is a Stegosaurus. Rawr. So it's going to be my diamond painting buddy. It's gonna hang out. Yeah, no house fly today, unfortunately. So, and pterodactyl, pterodactyl. Yeah, I I buy a couple of these Kinder eggs at a time, and Lost World, Jurassic Park, especially marked. Yeah, I have a few. Of these. <laughs> I have bought a quite a few of these uh, Lost World eggs. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Okay, so hopefully everybody's doing good. Yeah, I just love those Kinder Surprise eggs. So much fun up here. <laughs> Three dollars, especially if they're they're like, yeah, based on something. So, so cool. Okay, three twelve. All right. So this is kind of a blue. All right. So it's three twelves just kind of scattered throughout. Yeah, I just ran a couple irons just to get out of the house. A couple Mr. Big bars, chocolate bars, and he's like, take another one at the store there. There must have been like a two for one price deal or something. So I'm like, all right. And then I got another one of those Crossword Deluxe uh, Instant Win Scratch cards. There's six uh, Instant Win Crossword Scratch Offs in the $10 ticket. Yeah, really fun. I just like doing them. It's relaxing. It's just nice. Alright, so we're working on with this blue 312. So I'll just keep slamming away here. Alright. Hopefully everybody's still having a good day. Having a good time. Yep. Fairly straightforward kind of day. Yeah, doing another whipping chat. Yeah, why not? It's fun. Gets her done, get some more drills on this canvas. Alright. Uh, yeah, there's some ease right at the edge here, so I'll just do this right now. Yeah, this is part of the underwing here. Nice, beautiful stegosaurus.
Yeah, I, I guess I thought of the Stegosaurus because of the kind of spines on the back of this dragon's uh, head. Yeah, so I instantly thought of the Stegosaurus. Yeah, and then, yeah, Jurassic Park King Dregs. Yeah, that's where, <laughs> that's the connective uh, parts to that. That's where all this came from. <laughs> Just <laughs> over the past couple of whipping jets, I was talking about Kinder Eggs and all that, and the fact that it's Jurassic Park or whatever. Yeah, themed. Yeah, really cool. I know that other toys you get, like from Kinder Eggs, like regular, they're just kind of. Some of them are like, what the heck did I just get from this egg? <laughs> The heck did I get in here? <laughs> kind of funny, actually. It's like, this is really strange. I should just throw this out. Like, I don't collect these toys or anything. It's just... <laughs> like, I get a couple Kinder Eggs every once in a while. Sure, but... Yeah, not looking to collect two or three hundred of these Kinder Egg toys. Because good luck getting a random kind of... Getting a different toy every time. Good luck. <laughs> uh, I think I'm a little above the boundary here. Oops. Okay. So, okay, that's E over there. All right, let's look for more E. Yeah, nose, mouth, kind of. Okay, yeah, there's a couple E's in here. Okay, one right there. Love this blue. Actually, all the colors in here are pretty cool, so. Alright, but yeah, we're getting there. It's near the top of the canvas. I guess Chuck Along 4 has started? Is it? Or tomorrow? It's the 31st today. Okay, it's really cool. That starts tomorrow, Chuck Along 4. Yep. So, that's cool. I've already seen some uh, canvases kitted up. It has to be Chuck Pinson. Uh, I think Dreamer designs uh, Chuck Pinson canvases count. I think as long as it's Chuck Pinson. Uh, might have to look that up. Usually been Diamond Art Club. I think Diamond Art Club usually sponsors or has sponsored that event in the past. So I think as long as it's the chalk pencil, that's the main chalk pencil can canvas. Uh, no drills on it, like a brand new canvas, not started. Uh, you have to have it kitted up and take a picture of your start. Take a picture of the canvas unfinished and uh, that you've got to kit it up to start and then I think once a week you can uh, submit a progress picture kind of thing. I'm not running the event but I have done the chuck along for or chuck along events in the past. At least one. Chuck along two is where I uh, got involved. <laughs> where I started. Yeah, I did space for reflection for... That was my very first chuck, so... And probably one of my favorites. <laughs> one of my favorite canvases. So yeah, there should be a YouTube video up. Uh, Mindy's Diamond Moment, I believe. I probably did mention this a couple of whipping chats ago, maybe. Because I do mention... These events in passing for what I can remember <laughs> is there's tons of events going on I think there's drills and chills uh, on the radar too I believe and I think uh, might have a fall theme I haven't heard as much of with uh, the details of drills and chills but I've heard of the event just not all the details. So. 
I don't know, ask around on uh, Facebook groups, uh, Mindy Simon moment, look on her YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's usually a pretty informative uh, video. They've done it for the Chuck Along events all along, I believe. So yeah, just getting another swig of coffee in there. Uh, any more ease? Yeah, this is like a garnish kind of color. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody trying to call me. <laughs> Someplace in Ontario. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm. Uh, no thanks. Okay. Trying to record. Like, so when somebody calls me, jeez. Somebody I don't know. Probably a telemarketer now. Alright. Uh, yeah, charging cords in the way. Uh, phone might shake a little. Okay, there we go. Alright. Oh, is that an orange helicopter flying above? Uh, you're in a helicopter or a plane of some sort. Get that all of the time. Yeah, I was trying to talk about the Chuck Along 4, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Before I get this like, notification showing up on my screen that I got a phone call. Probably just a spam caller half the time. Just. Annoying. But yeah. Yeah, you don't necessarily have to finish your Chuck Pinson canvas within the four week period for the Chuck Long Four. Uh, uh there are prizes, I believe, that are drawn based on the number of entries. I think the initial start is a entry for draws for gift cards or something, maybe. I don't know all the details, but that's how it's gone in the past. But yeah, you can win prizes, but yeah. It's just a, an event to participate in, in general. It is fun. I did finish uh, Space for Reflection in the month. I heard on the dot, I believe. Yeah, so I think that's the only canvas I finished in a month, <laughs> to tell you the truth. A uh, canvas that size, that is. I'm starting to remember some other canvases that just took me a couple uh, weeks. I've done a lot of larger canvases more recently than uh, I've done some other canvases. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, I'm just slightly off screen here. There's like three E's over here. So yeah, just bear with me. I'm still here. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Alright. Uh, any more E's? Okay, there's like three more here. Alright. Boop. Alright, cool. Yeah, it's a very slight detail kind of drill color here. Uh, Alright. L. I'm seeing a lot of L. Yeah, some reds. Some number two ABs. Okay, yeah, I think that's it for uh, 312. Yeah, capital E. Yep, looks it. Okay, uh, put this color away. We're good, we're good. Yeah. 
this. Ah, there we go. Hello. All right. All right, what color? Oh, it's the AAB. Uh, that's the next color. <laughs> cool. All right, second, uh, 137 is the second AAB. So it's a blue. Yeah, this is an AAB, Aurora, Aurora Borealis. It's extra shiny. Yeah, it's an extra shiny color. That's basically it. Slightly fancier. So, uh, I get to do that. I'm just doing it in the order that's occurring on the canvas here. From uh, left to right. <laughs> in the bottom part of the section here. Hence the colors. <laughs> All right. Yeah, nothing much excited happening today. I, yeah, just pretty straightforward, down to earth kind of day. <laughs> All right. Yeah, there's just a few of these A B's in here, but it's not too crazy. Yeah, I wouldn't want too many ABs and on a canvas here. Okay, I'm just over at the side here. Uh, I don't know if I'm like even in. Yeah, the camera's sliding slightly again. Okay, here we are. Yeah, I'm just at the edge here. Whoops. Yeah, there might be some instances where the coating, yeah, you can't pick up the drills as good. With the coating, yeah. Just, I don't know if it's like powder or something on it, or just what the coating is. It's no big deal. I haven't had too much trouble. Okay, yeah, there's a couple twos in here. <laughs> They're just like scattered again. Yeah, and so I'm just trying to follow the. Here we go. Weird place along the nose here. Uh, really weird. But hey, I'm gonna go with it. Okay, yeah, one more two up here. Far corner. Bam. Okay, nice. Alright. Yeah, nothing inside the nose. Okay, let's go on further inside here. Yeah, just a very just a small amount of these scattered in this section. There'll be a few more twos in like the wing. Yeah, I'm already looking over to the next section. Yeah, there'll be a few more of these ABs. Yeah, and there's some in the night sky. Yeah, very gentle yeah detail okay very gently sprinkled throughout the canvas this ab okay number two yeah some up here so we'll just do that Boop. Oh, the air air conditioning must be on. My cover plastic is just kind of crinkling a bit. Just like, yeah, what the heck? Okay. All right. And number two, it's very gentle sprinkling in here. Okay. A few more. 
still showing. We're good, we're good. Okay, a few up here that I can see. So we'll just... Ah, jeez. Pay caught up that drill. Briar. Okay. Yeah, I'll just do that. Yeah, I'm a little beyond the section here, maybe. Eh, or not. Could be. Eh, not really. Okay. Probably, but, uh. Let's see, we'll just, uh. Put drills on them now. No big deal if I slightly go beyond where I'm working section wise. Not the end of the world. Yeah, it's just so I don't go like everywhere on the canvas here. It's just so makes it so hard to record. <laughs> oh, I'm going down here on the canvas now. Ooh, I'm moving the camera. <laughs> it's like, uh, all right, two. Okay, let's follow the scales. All this in as we go here. Yeah, oh, this should be good. All right. Oops. Very nice. So every once in a while, it's nice to have a little bit of bling on a canvas, just to take a break from the ordinary colors. Just for a bit. Yeah, I kind of feel kind of overwhelmed with the... Uh, I think it would be a little too much with uh, all ABs. All AB colors, yeah. Just, yeah. It's a little too busy for me. <laughs> Sometimes you need uh, muted colors to really define detail in a piece. Yeah, if you just have all A, Bs, then it's like... Kind of changes the whole mood of the piece. I kind of like being uh, as close to the original piece uh, with the rendering. And uh, with any canvas as possible. Yeah. Because if I like the original artwork, then yeah, that's the whole point. <laughs> that's why I want that canvas. That's why I want to get that diamond painting canvas. One in particular. It's just all blinged out, then it's like not really the original artwork. <laughs> There are definitely certain canvases that, yeah, you can bling out. It's like perfectly fine. It really doesn't affect the finished product, really. But yeah, I like those dark, descriptive colors. Yeah, sometimes you need the muted, not as bright, cheery colors all the time. Yeah, the canvas is telling a story, and uh, if it's just all bright and shiny and unrealistic looking, then it's like, eh. <laughs> eh. It'll look pretty, but it's just, all you're looking at is just something that's really extremely shiny. I don't know, that's my opinion anyway, but... Yeah, uh, really not one for extreme bling yeah, on a canvas. There are perfect places for it though, for a lot of ABs, but yeah, just a gentle sprinkle of detail will do. Like the AB uh, placement in this canvas is perfect, so it suits it just fine. It's not overbearing, it's just half decent. <laughs> I'm 
not sure which canvas has had the most uh, ABs so far. Uh, might be this one. Might be I am here. Yeah, uh, Space for Reflection did have uh, some ABs uh, on Golden Shores. Yes, a few. Yeah, I think in comparison, uh, this might have the most ABs thus far that I've done on a canvas. All good. Yeah, ABs are good. They're part of the kit, so. Yep. Put them where they need to go. Because I really don't have the luxury of uh, extra drills and just kind of just slamming ABs wherever I want. <laughs> Yeah, I really wouldn't trouble myself and like go and to an online store and get just blinged out drills. Yeah, no thanks. I usually just go with what's in the kit. I'm good. <laughs> All wonderful here. Oops. Yeah, um, there were like, I've seen like a couple of grasshoppers like around our house outside. Yeah, and got me thinking about the plagues in uh, the seven plagues in Exodus. I think there's actually like ten, but in the Bible, uh, there's seven. Crap, I just looked it up too. Uh,. Locusts, famine, drought, death, uh, young children dying, uh, boils, yeah, I may have to write them down, just a sec. Oh. Uh, hail, uh, I don't know, I'm somewhat like seeing 10 on a Google search and it's like, what? Okay, so, okay, drought, two, drought, famine, uh, death, Uh, locus, yeah. One, two, three, four. Oh, yeah, the blood in the water. Blood in water. Yeah, if you've seen Prince of Egypt, uh, the DreamWorks uh, animated movie. Um, yeah, it goes over the plagues in Exodus. Yeah, it's based on Exodus, the book in the Bible. Yeah, Moses is trying to free his people. Yeah, get his people out of Egypt. So, yeah, one of my favorite biblical stories. Death, drought, famine, locusts, blood and water. Ah, oh, what are they? Uh, young children. Dying, firstborn, yeah, firstborn. Firstborn children. Uh, yeah, just God sent these plagues because of uh, the Egyptian pharaoh at the time, Ramesses, I think. Is that right? Anyway, he refused to let uh, Moses' people go because they were building the pyramids and all that. Yeah, slaves technically, and uh, yeah. 
And I think there's like a death, drought, famine, locust, blood and water, young children, firstborn. Uh, uh, hail, fire, hail. Uh, boils. Yeah, boils or uh, leprosy. Yeah, you could just say disease too. Okay, uh, so disease, children dying, blood and water, three. Locust, four. Famine, five. Drought, six. Seven, or yeah, I think those are the seven. Fire, hill, I, they, they mentioned ten in the Google search when I looked it up, but yeah, anyway. Yeah, see grasshopper, I think they're in the locust family. I think locusts are in of themselves uh, their own thing, could very well be. But yeah, seven plagues of God. Yeah, just on Egypt, I think. Yeah, it's just like Egypt in general. It's getting... Uh, yeah. Moses says people are being treated not very well. And God God noticed and uh yeah, he sent these plagues to kind of uh try and convince Pharaoh to let uh Moses's people go. Yeah, take that Bible story as you may. Yeah, I do understand that it's yeah, might be over a lot of people's heads, but yeah, pretty uh, inspirational uh, character, regardless, Moses. So, if you've seen the Ten Commandments, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's along the same lines. Yeah, Prince of Egypt from DreamWorks. Yeah, it's probably more a little more memorable for some people, but yeah. Yeah, one of those inspirational stories I like. It could be an explanation for some natural disasters or outbreaks of disease at the time. Way back in ancient Egypt, which I kind of do love. Egypt is really cool. <laughs> Because, yeah, I played Assassin's Creed Origins when I did. Yeah, I mentioned this. Yep. And that was ancient Egypt in its prime. Like, when it was, oh, it's beautiful. The pyramids were, like, not destroyed or anything. As pristine. The Nile looked beautiful. Yeah, it's just a beautiful game to look at. Yeah. Pyramids were fully built. And, yeah. Just an amazing... Ancient Egypt looked amazing. <laughs> now it's just kind of... <laughs> probably still pretty, I'm sure. Hopefully. Can, can tell you. <laughs> really looked at Google Earth recently. How often do they update that? <laughs> There's like how many satellites orbiting Earth? And taking pictures? I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Google had a satellite up there, like, probably like the best way to get photos. And then of course there's a uh, Google Earth vehicles that have 360 degree cameras to help make region maps, yeah, to guide drivers so they don't get lost. Kind of like a GPS kind of thing, navigation maps. And they probably calculate distance, like the best uh, route to get to places. Yeah. So if you search up in an address, then it, it's just a database of uh, places and locations that were photographed or archived in uh, Google's database. Yeah. Just navigation in general. 
which is handy because I like specific uh, directions to get somewhere. Yep, point A, point B. Yeah, kind of handy. Yeah, I won't get too religious here. <laughs> yeah, I just like a that biblical story, Moses, Exodus. Probably pretty cool. Uh, one of the mo more interesting books in the Bible for sure. But yeah, take yeah, take what happens in the Bible as it may. <laughs> yeah, some of it's sage advice for people, and then other times it's uh, yeah, just stories. <laughs> yeah, there's differing opinions about the Bible for sure. And I'm just fighting with my charge cord here. Okay, there we go. I care from my rock and back and forth a bit here. Okay. Uh, Noah's Ark. Mm, not as fun. Yeah, that world world flooded because it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Yeah, people were getting a little too uh, out of control. So, God asked Noah to build an ark and grab a pair of each animal that walked the earth to kind of salvage them and his family. Yeah, yeah, I think his family in general was on the ark as well told to go on to the ark and it was built to a specific way nobody believed Noah when the rain fell rain started to fall uh, he was collecting all the animals in pairs somehow it must have been like one continent the earth must have been like a huge continent or something then for all the animals to be able to navigate or get to uh, the ark, wherever it was derived in the story, like, uh, <laughs> yeah, archaeologists and people are trying to find uh, the Garden of Eden or where it could have been, it's like two rivers or something in like a Egypt area, Iran or whatever. The Middle East, I guess. Yeah. Nepal and Euphrates River. I could be totally wrong. As usual. <laughs> yeah. Two rivers mentioned in the Bible, I guess. And then, uh, yeah, it's in Genesis. Yeah. Uh, not saying uh, let's uh, pull out a Bible and read a. Uh, some Bible passages, no, or just diamond painting, but yeah, it's a couple interesting uh, uh, stories in the Bible that I like, have enjoyed, <laughs> or found insightful. Yeah, but you, if people believe that Harry Potter's real, then uh, yeah, we have a problem. It says fiction. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> You're a wizard, Harry. Okie dokie. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah, if we're thinking Twilight's real too, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, kind of in trouble. <laughs> See, to be honest. But, yeah. If literature is that engaging, then yeah. Yeah, I can see how some segments could be believable. Uh, for biblical stuff, there's evidence of past civilizations, like archaeological digs of some aspects of the Bible, I guess. Well, it's possible. But, yeah, the Bible only tells you so much. There's not extravagant amounts of detail. It's like 
the genealogy of early humankind, like all the families, and yeah, that was a confusing uh, chapter or so. It's like tribes or something, there's like families or something, guilds, or yeah, just go forth and multiply, like spread across the earth and go forth and multiply so that's what god commanded uh, that's what god wanted adam and eve to do go forth and multiply yeah it was a genesis thing so yeah not going into too much detail here just like a it's kind of scraping the surface of some biblical literature. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't believe that stuff, it's okay. It's a, it's a book. It's a very uh, popular book. It's sold, probably sold billions of copies or been printing, printed like how many different times? Yeah, if you mention the Bible, yeah, <laughs> you'll probably get some sort of response to somebody. Oh, yeah, oh, Bible. And it's like, which version? It's like, yeah. That's when it gets a really new international version. Yeah, I think there's just a New Testament, like just the New Testament, the Old Testament. Yeah. Yeah, Bible just has a lot of going on. Bibles for Kids, New International Version, uh, King James Version, which, yeah, is very used a lot still, uh, especially in the U.S. Yeah, I get some Bible passages that are from, and word searches that are from uh, the King James Version like shall and ye, ye shall, yeah, that, that kind of language, old English. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, I guess, is that a, like, Catholic Church thing? I suppose. Now, well, if it's a, it's a version of the Bible, so there you go, I can't argue with that. I'm basically a new international version guy, but when I do get the Bible out, not as often anymore, but I have read the entire Bible, like did like a daily course or whatever. Don't remember too much because the verses were like all over the place and you're just like reading verses. Okay, you've read that part of the Bible today. Yeah, it's just all over the place. But you do end up reading the entire Bible, but it's something you did independently. Like you have certain verses to read every day. Yeah, I mean, you're just some passages are like, okay, I read it, but I don't know what any of that meant. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, there's different accounts, like, different people wrote different parts of the Bible. And some of it could be biased because of who wrote the book of the Bible or who wrote the passages in the Bible. Yeah, it's... <laughs> A book that can upset a lot of people, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, that's a given. Yeah, that's understandable. It can be interpreted differently. Like I said, art is subjective. The Bible can be sub subjective or kind of suggestible, give you different... People react to the Bible differently. Two people could read the same passage and it would mean something totally different to them, to each of them. 
or it'd be interpreted differently. So, yeah. It's a book, it's there. Uh, some people don't have to open it if they don't want to or read it, just like any other book, but yeah. Uh, for the Bible to disappear all of a sudden or not be uh, used anymore would be really jarring, I think. Yeah, what if the Bible wasn't published? Like, what if uh, your favorite book wasn't published? Like, how, where would you be now? Like, how different would life be? That's a good theoretical question. Something interesting to think about. Yeah, would, uh, yeah, beliefs would certainly be different. Values would certainly be different. Yeah, interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I think there was like a some sort of TV show, um, some documentary. Sure, it was pretty sure it was on the documentary channel because I just watched that kind of stuff. Uh, the world without, and then it was a certain invention. World without electricity or the light bulb or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a scenario when it was just, yeah, the earth just wouldn't function at all if uh, certain stuff was gone. Yeah, I think the light bulb was one of them. Yeah, there'd be tons of like traffic accidents and it just broke down just in theory what would uh, happen to society as a whole if, uh, yeah, certain things weren't invented, so. Yeah, pretty eye-opening stuff, yeah. World would be uh, crippled without a couple inventions. Bluetooth and yeah, infrared. Yeah. We probably wouldn't have wireless uh, technology as it is at this point. Yeah, I gotta get another piece of wax here. Yeah, this coating is proving to be a little tricky. Or should I just try to. Just mix the wax up a bit and put it back in. Yeah, I'll try that just to start. Yeah, I'll squish it back in here. Okay, I'll try that. Just leave that toothpick there just in case. Yeah, just mix it around because I just have a few more of these drills. A few more of these ABs. Okay, there we go, that's better. Yeah, the coating is just on these. May slightly come off onto the wax and make it really hard to pick up or the wax is just worn out which is this common as well no I'm not even yeah, I'm just over here slightly oh maybe I was Yeah, it's basically down to whatever you believe. Eh, or if you're not religious at all. Eh, that's fine too. It's all good. Yeah, there are other uh, people or things or causes that can be draw just as much inspiration. And it doesn't have to be religious or Christian or anything. So, yeah, or... We're all different and diverse. That's just... You could say the Bible's uh, kind of pre-science. Well, 
before silent silence was established, it was a good explanation for things and a way to teach society how to act in a way or try to get them to act respect one another yeah the golden rules in there do unto others as they would do to you respect one another etc respect your neighbor and that's where that stuff came from but yeah I think law is somewhat based on religion dude uh, some aspects yeah. and they're still used today not necessarily in a religious sense but the context of how it uh, came to be is uh, still there remnants so, yeah yeah in a courtroom uh, you have to put your hand on a holy bible if you want to I think you can opt out to tell the truth and nothing but the truth, so it will help you. God, apparently, is what... Yeah, you testify in the Bible or whatever. Swear an oath of truth or whatever. Uh, court of law, but yeah, you can opt out, I'm sure, at this point. <laughs> yeah, because not everybody uh, goes by the Bible, per se, but... Yeah, there's the Big Bang Theory. Yeah, that's the total other quantum mechanics and relativity, gravity, equals MC square physics. Yeah, and a whole other way to explain how the world works. Yeah, the science way. And then, even then, sometimes science can really upset people. <laughs> yeah, it... It's just a different way to explain what's going on in the world or aspects of the world that may not be easily understood, like right on the get-go. You can intermingle the two, uh, religion and science, if you want to, or you could classify them both as knowledge, the Bible, past knowledge, science evolved version from biblical ideas so you could say the bible uh kind of uh set science in the direction like it science helped answer questions that the bible couldn't you could look at it that way it's one way to look at or you could just go forego any biblical explanations because they're just fables and fairy tales. Yeah, that's what my mom thinks. But yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, not to be religious or anything. <laughs> Nobody has to be. <laughs> Nobody really has to go by science if they don't understand it either. So either way, yeah. It's just a way to understand. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but truth be told, I think uh, science explains what the Bible cannot. Yeah, science is a little more specific. It's fact-based. Yeah. It strives to prove or disprove uh, hypothesis, hypotheses or questions, proving whether or not they're credible or true to fact yeah that's yeah science in a nutshell uh testing different theories seeing if they're viable or not and discovering how aspects of the planet and space and all life works from uh, a single atom or nucleus to yeah, the cosmos. Yeah, science. <laughs> Helps us develop new technology, et cetera, et cetera. Science is a huge branch. Religion helps science. 
kind of align a direction of discovery or reasoning to line it up. Yeah, kind of help science go in the direction that they're looking to make it. Yeah, so 336. Yeah, I won't get too sciencey or too religious on here. It's just, yeah. <laughs> All right, 336. Yeah, biology and physics and all that is interesting. Science fiction, it's really cool. There are aspects of religion, Christianity, that I do like, like inspirational-wise. Some good quotes and advice have come from the Bible, for sure. But, yeah, taking the Bible for, like, what it is, yeah, it, eh. Yeah, just, yeah, don't take uh, some stories in the Bible as, like, actual world history. It might have been a way to define events at that time when they were written, but... Yeah, history has a lot more to it than uh, very vague descriptions in uh, scripture. I think the Bible is more like a kind of inspirational life guidance. Yeah, teachable moments than uh, a historical account. <laughs> yeah, I, I look at the Bible more that that way and then... Science, yeah, defines a lot of uh, issues and, yeah, explains a lot. <laughs> a lot more. <laughs> so, yeah, basically the some of that kind of stuff, kind of where I am in religious sense. <laughs> when I was young, yeah, I was enthralled by the Bible. It's like a very interesting book. Read passages again and again. And then just when you get older, it's just you become a bit wiser and you start understanding a lot more what's said in the Bible can contradict what's happening in real life. What was, uh, Kind of experienced in the Bible, yeah, society, yeah, could have changed greatly. Well, has changed greatly over time. Yeah. <sighs> Some of it's old knowledge, yet useful today, like advice, sage advice, love and marriage and yeah, etc, etc, death, grieving, yeah, all that's still credible. Yeah, the Bible's not like a total loss. Like, it's not a total useless book. It's helpful for a lot of people. It's like a good staple for... It's a staple of the Christian religion, so... Or a necessary part, or a big part. It, it's not a useless book. But to, yeah, some religions, yes, because they have the Quran, and yeah, there's other religious material, which I agree with, right along the lines of the Bible. No, I'm not discrediting, discrediting or off-putting any different religion or belief, believe me. Yeah, <laughs> not doing that. Uh, yeah. So the Bible is one version of religion. The Quran is another set of beliefs, occurrences, yeah, uh, values, yeah. It's all about heritage, where people came from, what the times were like, when the Bible was written, when the Quran was written, like. The earth was a totally different place then, and how we communicate has, yeah, 
there's a lot more, yeah, going on between the lines of uh, the Bible, the Quran, or any religious, the Dead Sea Scrolls, etc., etc., etc. Yeah, there's a lot more between the lines going on, and yeah. <laughs> so let's not take the Bible literally, like, yeah. <laughs> Let's not take text literally. It can be a. Uh, it's one way to explain something that happened in a place and time. For sure. It's a description of an event or a disaster. Yes. But taking a, a Bible story literally for what it is yeah i'm get a little shaky about that yeah but i'm about the values and uh inspirational messaging in the bible that's how i look at the bible and if you look at the bible differently or not at all then we're good <laughs> yeah it's all good it's meant to be interpreted or not read at all it, it's just there it's like the Quran or any other religious. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's free to be interpreted or not looked at at all. Uh, believed, understood, questioned, uh, contested, uh, downright dejected in some cases. Some people just, yep. No thanks. Uh, no religious entities. Yeah, there's... God doesn't exist. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, and it's all good. <laughs> not here to judge anybody. And I'm not here to... This isn't uh, the hour of power. <laughs> it's Diamond Penny. Just, uh... I'm inspired by some characters in the Bible and some of the messaging. That's all where I was going. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, Noah, Moses. Yep. And then what happened in Revelation? That's kind of now, like around these times. But yeah, that's uh, symbolic too. Shouldn't probably be taken literally. It's, yeah, that should be taken word for word. It's based on a vision that the writer or author of that yeah, it was a series of visions or something. Yeah, that's Revelation, but... Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, you've been watching Echoes of Color with Jeffrey Morrison. Uh, down below, I place uh, my Facebook profile name. Yeah, my first and last name. Uh, Echoes of Color Facebook business page. And uh, my Instagram. Just to uh, post updates about how my... Uh, color and chats are going, how the echoes of color channel is going, what's going on every now and then. It's not constant. So if I finish this section, I take a picture and then just post it on, uh, yeah, in those places and we're good to go. So yeah, yeah, I won't get terribly religious here on echoes of color. Yeah, just, yeah, might come up every now and then, but it's nothing yeah, I'm not going to be, like, reading verses out of the Bible here. Uh, everyone's free to believe what they may. Uh, yeah, if you if you read the Bible every day and you're religious, yeah, great. Yeah, that's great. It's what you believe in. It's what motivates you, inspires you. That's what it's there for. Uh, if you, If you're agnostic, don't believe at all. Or, yeah, agnostic, it's a couple terms, or don't believe in God. Yeah, that's good too. No worries. <laughs> Just here to diamond paint, talk every now and then. If you love science-based stuff, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's just one couple different ways to look at the world from different uh, perspectives and different times. But... Yeah, some of the stuff correlates together, and uh, some of the values in the Bible still exist today. So, that's where I was going. <laughs> that's about it.
but yeah anyway take care i'll get this uploaded and uh yeah see you around later <laughs>